Hey everyone, this is Josh from Before, and I'm here with McFarland Toys' new line of Pacific Rim 4-inch scale figures. These were sent over to review by our friends at McFarland Toys. They are a small scale, but there's a lot to look at here. You know, it's been a minute since I've done a full-length review. I've had a lot going on. We got two new cats. I've been putting a lot of work into the next issue of my comic, and I've been chipping away at a whole bunch of new customs. Believe me, I've missed you all, and I will have some new reviews and end-of-the-year stuff coming soon, so be ready for that. But for now, let's check out these Pacific Rim figures. Individually, we've got four Jaeger mechs, four Kaiju monsters, and then this big box set that they're calling the Starter Pack. The individual figures have this snazzy, pseudo-militaristic packaging. The four Jaegers are Gypsy Danger, Crimson Dynamo, Cherno Alpha, and Striker Eureka. And they'll be battling Knifehead, Raiju, Leatherback, and Otachi. Each individual figure is packaged with a comic. The Jaegers each have a unique issue of Tales from the Drift, while the Kaiju each have a unique issue of a different series called Aftermath. Now, when the word came through that McFarlane was going to be doing Pacific Rim figures, I got really excited. In the past few years, they've done some mechs and creature figures in the 7-inch scale that have been really spectacular, especially for their price point. And personally, I absolutely love the first Pacific Rim movie. It really doesn't get much more badass than that flick. But then my excitement was kind of squashed when it was revealed that these were going to be smaller scale. I don't know if it's licensing constraints or maybe the property has proven to be a big hit with a younger crowd. I really can't tell you, but seeing these little figures, they're cute and kind of fun, but it feels like a missed opportunity. They do have more articulation than I expected. Knees and elbows for the Jaegers and a little bit of ball joint movement at the shoulders and hips, but not a ton. The kaiju have less, unfortunately. They're mostly just simple cuts at the shoulders and hips. Some of them don't even have the hips. A few of them have a waist, some of them have bendy tails, but the bend bendy material is threatening to come apart in some places. They are fun for what they are, but geez, man. Otachi here, like one of the coolest, most memorable monsters in modern cinema. This thing could have been figure of the year contender if he was done in a larger scale, but this is just a mostly pre-posed little trinket. One of the least fun pieces of this whole line. The fun factor is aided by the accessories. Each figure comes with a street base, a destructible skyscraper, and a pair of military vehicles. There are a total of six unique vehicles. Some of them even have a little bit of movement, like the tank cannons. The buildings are segmented into four pieces. The vertical parts of the buildings are all identical, and each segment has the same jagged edge of separation, so you can make them taller or shorter, mix and match the pieces, etc. It's a pretty smart way to do these, and being able to put together a mini diorama does elevate the fun factor in a big way. It makes you feel like you're getting a lot of stuff in the box. But having all this stuff in the box it seems to have inflated the price point. These are $20 each, which feels like an absurdly high cost for such a small item. And there's a lot of them, eight figures at $20 a piece. I don't know, folks. That feels like a kaiju-sized price point for dinky little four-inch figures. A much better value is the $40 Gold Label Collection Starter Pack. This is an Amazon exclusive, and it contains two Jaegers, one Kaiju, four street pieces, four buildings, and 24 military vehicles. The figures are Battle Damaged, Gypsy Danger, a slightly different Striker Eureka with chest cannons on display, and a modified Raiju with his face peeled back to reveal an even gnarlier face underneath. So for the price of two individual figures, you could put together a pretty grand little scene here. Overall, this is pretty underwhelming for me. Maybe if you've got kids, I could see them going nuts for Pacific Rim, but the price point is just plain bad. Compare this to the bargain price Lennard toys or stuff like that, and it's not really even a contest. If they want to deliver these characters at 7-inch scale or even mega fig scale, I'll be there day one. But these aren't for me, and I hate to say that because these aren't phoned in or anything. They're just the wrong thing for collectors like us, which is just too bad because Pacific Rim is so cool, just untouchably cool, or at least the first one is. I don't know about the second one. Anyway, let me know what you think, and I'll catch you next time. Big thanks to McFarlane Toys for sending these over to review. Peace out.